Good morning, brothers and sisters. Word of welcome to everybody who's joining us this morning in, in this uh, service, this worship service. Uh, we pray that the Lord will bless us when we come together to, to praise, and to pray, and to listen to the Word of God. Uh, we want to give our flowers this morning to Kobe Blom, who walked the lonely load with COVID. Uh, gratefully, she's uh, recovering, although still slow. Uh, Kobe, may the Lord bless you and give you good health. We also announced that Nardis Conradi, who was previously a member here, was again hospital hospitalized uh, with uh, pneumonia. We pray that the Lord will be with him and Bets. We also uh, pray for Pietro van der Fever, whose brother, Sarah Buta, died uh, during the week. We prayed for the loved ones whose families were traumatized during the last week's riots in KwaZulu-Natal and Gauteng. We pray that the Lord will give you peace and calm. We uh, want to greet Ilse Kien, uh, who is now going back to Mayerton, Reformed Church in Mayerton. We received venison as a donation and we process it into burovors uh, that we sell for the benefit of the service center, the Dean Center for Boyardes in Pochestrum. Uh, it is for sale at 80 rand a kilogram, and you can place orders with the sisters committee, uh, Anne and Judy and Lynn van der Meer. Thank you for your support. Reverend Willem is still on leave until the end of this week. And uh, we also want to remind you, uh, all the members of the congregation, to fill in the poppy forms. Uh, we are obliged uh, to do that. Uh, it doesn't work the same as with the cell phone numbers uh, in, in our congregation because we are using your information more than that, and therefore silent consent is not uh, possible for us to do, and we urge you to fill in these forms and to come in contact with the church office if you uh, did not do it already. Congratulations on your birthdays this week. Uh, today, Marie Mostert. On Monday, Nicolas van Tonder is turning four. Almiru Kok van van Wijk. On Tuesday, it's the birthday of Chante Kriel and Ria Lesen, who is turning 81. On Wednesday, Wilhelm Rost and Tendrin Fenter, 90 years old, is Lord willing. On Thursday, Gert van der Merwe and Francis Maritz. On Friday, Lisa Breet and Derek Pfeiffer. And on Saturday, Stella van der Wald, Jan Adrian Hatten, De Wettler Roo, Karin van den Berg and Kovis van der Wald. May the Lord bless you in this coming year. Thank you, Professor Francois Villeun will lead us in the service this morning. Uh, thank you for being willing, and we are looking forward to worship the Lord with you. Let us start uh, by singing from Psalm 42. Let us prepare us for, as for this uh, meeting with the Lord.
Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is a great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down into worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, the flock under His care. Beloved, grace and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ through the powerful working of the Holy Spirit. Let us sing Psalm 84 verses 1, 2, and 5. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord. My soul yearns for the courts of the Lord. Psalm 84 verses 1, 2, and 5. Let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us sing together the hymn, Our Conf Confidence is in the Lord.
Dear loved brothers and sisters, we are called to examine ourselves in the light of God's law. Let us humble ourselves by listening to Jesus' summary of the law in Matthew 22. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert of the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment of the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Let us now sing together Psalm 25, verses 2 and 4. Show me your ways, O Lord. Let us pray together. Almighty and merciful God, we realize and confess before you that if you should take into account what we have done, we would be unworthy to lift our eyes towards heaven and present our prayers before you. Our consciences accuse us and our sins testify against us. And yet, in your fatherly goodness, you have adopted us in Christ and he liked to hear our prayers, which we offer through his mediation. Therefore, we look to no other king and seek no other advocate for the help that we need in this world and in the world to come. You call us to seek not only our own salvation and good, but that of your whole church and the world. And we do so now. O God, we mourn the violence, the lawlessness and destruction that parts of our country have experienced over the past week. Holy One, you are our comfort and strength in times of disaster, crisis, or chaos. Surround us with your grace and peace through storm or earthquake, fire or flood. By your Spirit, lift up those who have fallen. Sustain those who work to rescue or rebuild. And fill us with the hope of your new creation through Jesus Christ, our Rock and Redeemer. We pray for your blessing on the reading and meditation of your holy word. 
that it may be faithfully proclaimed and that the world may be filled with the knowledge of your truth. To that end, send workers into your field to plant, to water and harvest a people for your name. But frustrate the work of those who would sow weeds of heresy and discord. Pull down all the strongholds of Satan in this world and establish your kingdom through the earth. Strengthen those who suffer persecution for the sake of the gospel and strengthen them in mind and body by your spirit. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, we read the first 10 verses. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else. For each one shall carry his own load. Anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful desire, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people especially to those who belong to the family of the believers. Our focus verse, verse 9, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And verse 10 we read, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Brothers and sisters, I suppose, as I am, you are hugely disappointed and discouraged at what has happened the past week in our country. Seriously, people defied law and order and destruction. People who provoke violence and incite intolerance between people. In just a few days, much has been destroyed. Not only physical things like buildings, property, but also trust, loyalty, and goodwill amongst people, and even people's lives. This has happened in such a short span of time, while many of us devote years and years and a lot of energy and effort to create create a better society and goodwill amongst people. In times like these, it is appropriate that we listen to the warning of Galatians 6 verse 9 again. Let us not become weary in doing good. Let us not become weary in doing good. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. You know, the main aim of the devil is to deactivate the church and Christians. He can do this with upright persecution, false teachings, and so on. But very often, also in our country, I think it's more subtle, making church people weary in doing good. This is really a threat when we observe the blatant destruction of what we try to build up over many years. What should we do? Let's start off with what we shouldn't do, what we mustn't do, the negative. 
The blatant thing would be to say, we'll just stop doing anything that's good. We are so disappointed. It is not worth the effort. We get negative in our talks and our deeds, and we incite others to also become extremely negative and despondent. Or maybe a bit more subtle, that we say we're not opposed to good deeds of others as long as I'm not involved, as long as nothing is asked from me. Or otherwise, I do it as a sheer duty. I know it's somehow required of me to do some kinds of good. But I do it with a lot of moaning and groaning, without, without any commitment. This is a negative. We shouldn't do this. What should we do? Let's turn to the positive. I think in the first place, we should do some self examination. What happened to ourselves? Maybe we just try to do too much with our own strength. Think of Elijah. In Kings 1 Kings 18, we read of Elijah who is bold and courageous. Victoriously, he faced all kinds of odds. Elijah experienced God's supernatural strength to do the extraordinary. But in chapter 9, we find Elijah fearful, running scared, he's exhausted, he's depressed, he wants to die. But let us also look at how the Lord worked to restore this prophet. He needed rest. He was overburdened. And then God gave him rest and food to eat. God knows that we are frail, that we need rest. And we need to confess this as well and to recognize this. So this is a danger when trying to do good, to think that we are strong, that we can do this all by our own strength, our plans, and even our proud. No, recognize our own frailty and pray for God's power and courage in continuing to do good. Furthermore, let us consider what it means to do well. Is it just another tick in my to-do list? Another task I have to take up? Then I would say I don't have enough energy. I just don't have time to do more. And rather we would say to do well means a way of living, a lifestyle driven by the Holy Spirit, constantly living a holy life, bearing the fruit of the Spirit like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, etc. Remember that we have a higher calling. We are involved in a campaign for the most worthy cause. Put your life in perspective of eternity. And most importantly, think of what our Lord has done for us. God demonstrates his own life to us, our own love for us in this while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Our Lord was despised, he was rejected by mankind. He was suffering and familiar with pain. He took up pain. He bore suffering. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. 
consider him who endured such a position for sinners, so that we will not grow weary and lose heart in doing good. Therefore, brothers and sisters, while we might be extremely disappointed at what has happened in recent days, let us stay focused. Let us examine ourselves in the light of Galatians 6, verse 9 and 10. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Amen. Let us pray together. We confess that we get angry and easily get discouraged and disheartened in doing good as we observe levels of destruction as in our country. Let us not lose perspective of our calling as Christians. Let us set our eyes on Jesus Christ, who did not become tired for our sake. Empower us by your Holy Spirit in doing good for the sake of your kingdom. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It's now time for our love offering. It goes to the Tuso Fund, a uh, fund for supporting the younger churches. And you can do the payment as indicated on the screen currently. We now conclude our, our service by singing the hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns, Revive Your Church, O Lord. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <laughs>